Ah, there you are. I was expecting you. Let us begin. In a land where few things are bound by the normal laws of reality, Lordran can often be mistaken for a realm without rules, self-contained and constant. But even in this land, nothing can fight the ravages of time. Time has toppled the mighty lords of Anor Londo, crumbled the kingdoms of New Londo and Isolith, and ravaged the power of the gods. And perhaps this effect is seen best in these humble woods, shrouded in eternal darkness, just beyond the crumbling spires of the undead parish lies the Darkroot Garden. Home now to ravenous plants and murderous spirits, beasts of flesh and constructs of stone, these woods have seen the fall of many an adventurer. Trekking through the vegetation, it would be easy for a careless wanderer not to notice branches snaking towards him through the undergrowth ready to snare them and engorge on their fleshy prey. The Ents are man-sized, bush-like creatures with branch-like arms that can extend like vines to bash and grab their prey. Capable of burrowing into the ground, these creatures are known to spring forth, surprising and startling their victims. But, as with all flora, they wilt in the face of fire and it is said that the mosses that grow upon their bodies have various healing properties, providing one has the strength and the courage to harvest it. Pushing deeper into the forest, we come across a large door, sealed tight with a large indentation in the centre. Stories claim that beyond this door lies the resting ground of the fabled warrior Artorius, known as the Vanquisher of the Abyss, and saviour of Ulysil. Just past the door, further into the garden, we begin to encounter large automatons, stone knights wielding strange magics and ancient stone weaponry. These beings appear to be ancient, much older than the other denizens of the woods, and strangely driven, as if standing in defence of an imaginary kingdom. But there is another creature in these woods that does not belong. During his many experiments, Seath the Scaleless created many creatures, flawed, hideous beings, as well as successful servants. One such creation was the Moonlight Butterfly, a giant butterfly with mysterious magical powers, capable of shooting beams of light at anything that threatened it. But why is it here? so far from Seath's labs and in such a dark place. All that lies at the top of this tower is a rigid corpse of a long dead blacksmith, a brilliant white ember and an old key to a large stone tower. But upon finding the door this key opens, perhaps we will find our answers. For most adventurers, this is as far as the garden will allow them to travel, but if one were to hold in his possession the crest of Artorius, he could unlock the large stone gate that bars the way to his resting place. But none have ever reached his grave and returned to tell of it, for this part of the forest is haunted by the spirits of fierce huntsmen, honour bound to defend the woods from any and all invaders. Bound to the service of the one known as Alvina, a feline with an unnerving eloquence, they show no mercy to any who might come to pillage the graves of the fallen, but a fierce camaraderie among their own ranks. The clan is thine own family. To thine kinsmen forever stay true. Darest not in any attempt to double-cross. Have no doubt. Such wretchedness never will we tolerate. It is unknown what drove this motley band to such a noble endeavour, but there are some who claim that Alvina was a companion of Artorius himself and served as a protector out of her fondness for her fallen friend. However, it may also be an elaborate ruse, for if one thing can be counted on in Lordran, it is the greed of men. 
Perhaps Alvina's entourage simply found that this was an ideal location to sit in wait for grave robbers, only to pillage them instead. For if one thing is true about the hunters of the forest, they value trinkets highly. It is said that no kill goes unrewarded amongst their ranks. Beyond Alvina's stretch of wood, a family of mushroom people dwell, the children playing harmlessly while the parents keep a watchful eye, ready to step in and protect their brood from any threat. Beyond the stretch of wood, a stone bridge spans a chasm, water rushing past beneath, and a giant stone door dwarfing the landscape, the last gateway between the forest and the fallen hero. But there is another path one could take to arrive here, for the crest of Artorius is a rare object, and not all adventurers can afford the price such a treasure would surely fetch. Near the entrance to the garden, a small side path can be found, leading to a cliff face that winds down beside a large chasm, descending down beneath the garden and into an area known as Darkroot Basin. Seeth's crystal golems patrol the area. Large elemental constructs of pure crystal given life, they crush and smash invaders without thought or feeling. It is unclear why these golems reside here, but there are a few possible theories. Could it have something to do with the rumours of a strangely dressed woman sighted in the area? Said to wield powerful magics of an ancient kingdom, it would certainly be reasonable to believe that Seath may have sent his golems to investigate these reports, for we know of his fascination with maidens. Just beyond where they stalk, a large stone tower with a door tightly sealed. It leads to the undead berg, and more specifically, the resting place of what was once the man known as Havel the Rock. A known enemy of Seath, Perhaps the golems were there to keep watch over him, should he ever escape his prison and seek vengeance on his ancient rival. The door is sealed tight, but the key is already retrieved, gathered from amongst the treasures guarded by the butterfly in the garden. Perhaps this is the true reason that Seif set it in this place. But there is another being in the basin that might garner Seif's eye. The Hydra floats upon the waters that pool at the deepest point of the basin, spitting bullets of water capable of crushing stone and shattering bones from each of its many heads. Anything brave or foolish enough to get close to the creature will find themselves under an onslaught of blows, but upon its death a dragon scale can be gathered. Could it be that Seath desired this scale and the golems were sent to claim it. Beside a waterfall, opposite the Hydra's lake, a series of ladders can be found, a seemingly convenient way around the sealed door and back up into the garden. But, one way or another, a price must be paid. Lurking in wait up the path, giant, cat-like creatures wait, ready to pounce and ambush any self-satisfied wanderer may have snuck past the gate and guardians. The giant stone doors part with little resistance, and the fabled tombstone looms beyond the resting place of the hero of Ulysseal. But there is a final guardian, a companion of the fallen warrior that still yet lives. Sif, the great grey wolf, has stayed by our master's side all these years, watching out for any who may come to desecrate his memory. But her final battle is one that she must fight with a heavy heart against an old friend and ally to protect them from themselves. And so, in the tomb of the hero who battled the darkness, the twilight now reigns, so that even during the daytime the gardens sit in darkness but this was not always the state of this place. It was once a land of light and beauty, but that, that was long ago. Now go, whatever you do, 
Do not crack and go hollow, lest my time spent on you be wasted. <laughs>